did you just read what I saw on the screen? It says, batteries low change soon. Do you guys see, see that? You saw that? But I'm glad this morning that my battery is full, amen? And I'm glad that your battery is full as well because we're going to hear something from the Lord. And we are not dictated by technology. You know, the word is still going to go out. But please pray for us. Amen? Amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. My sister, I think it's my first time seeing you this Sabbath, right? I'll talk to you after, but I think it's my first time seeing you. Welcome to Jakarta Central Church. You know what I mean? I feel a little bit, we, we are home, you know what I mean? Yeah, so praise, praise Lord. my sister from Africa, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we are in this series called You Don't Complete Me. Let me do a little bit of a survey. How many of you are blessed by what you have heard so far? Yeah? This side is not blessed. You guys are not blessed. Okay, okay you're blessed. All right, all right. Good, good, good. You don't complete me. What are we trying to talk about uh, in this particular theme. Relationships, Sister Varisa, don't begin with the other person. They begin with you. The challenge for us a lot of times in relationships, Sister Patricia, is that we are looking at other people. But we are saying, don't look at the other person. You got to complete yourself. You got to be complete within if you're going to have wonderful relationships, if you're going to have meaningful marriages. And, and there was something that Pastor Sam said that is still ringing in my brain this Sabbath. It's okay not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay where you are. Did you guys catch that last week? Pastor Sam is saying you may not be right, things may be going on in your life, but don't use that as a reason to remain where you are. Some of us are saying, oh, it was like that at home, or I was, I've always been like this. No, you don't got to be like that. It doesn't have to be the way it was in your home. You can get over your pride. You can get over your inferiority complex. You can get over your cheating and your lying. If you say, you know what, it's not okay what I'm doing, but God is going to elevate me to where I'm supposed to be. That has stuck with me in the course of the week. Today, I want us to work with Proverbs. Proverbs is a book written by Solomon and I don't think that you can talk about relationships uh, brother Bernard without talking to Proverbs and I think we can listen to Solomon. The brother had 300 girlfriends <laughs> no no 300 wives and 700 girlfriends. I don't know how he did it brother Ernest but Solomon was a magician with the women. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I want us to listen to Solomon real quick this morning and we're going to listen to him in Proverbs chapter 7 and verse number 1. And we're going to read until verse number 5. We're going to jump to verse 23 until the end of the chapter. So if you have the scripture, Proverbs 7 and verse number 1, please stand with me as we honor God's word this morning. Proverbs chapter 7. And we're reading from verse number 1 until verse 5. And then we're going to jump to verse number 24. And then we'll wrap it up. If you got it, say amen. amen. If you don't got it, say hold up, pastor. All right, sister Stella says hold up. I'm going to hold up for you. If your feet work, you don't have a broken bone in your body, please stand for the reading of the scripture. Stella, are you there? Everybody else got it? All right, all right. This is what it says. My son. You can also put daughter there my son keep my words treasure up my commandments with you keep my commandments and live keep my teaching my teaching as the apple of your eye bind them on your fingers write them on the tablet of your heart tablets are not a new thing they didn't have ipads and samsung tab aids but tablets have been there. In, in the Bible, it's the tablet of your heart. Uh, something to think about. Verse number four. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call insight your intimate friend. You see, for some of us, we need to break up with misunderstanding. And we need to start dating understanding. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. Call inside your intimate friend. Verse number five, to keep you from the forbidden woman. 
Mm, mm, mm. From the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. Let's jump to 24. And now, O oh sons, listen to me and be attentive to the words of my mouth. Let not your heart turn aside to her ways, the forbidden woman, her ways. Do not stray into her path, the forbidden woman. For many a victim mm, has she laid low, and all her slain are mighty, are a mighty throng. Her house is the way to the grave, going down to the chambers, chambers of death. While looking at this text, the Lord inspired me with this thought. Weaponize your singleness. Weaponize your singleness. Let us pray. Mighty God, do what you do. I'm but a man. And your people are but people. I pray, Lord, that you would do a miracle. And that is, help us to understand your word. But not only help us to understand, but Father, help us to stand under your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It shocked me. It will shock you too. A CCO boy in the state of Virginia in the United States took a gun while he's listening to his teacher teaching. Sister Madeline, he shot his teacher. It shocked me. A six-year-old boy took a gun and shot his teacher in class. Six years old. The mayor of Newport News, Virginia, says it is almost impossible to wrap our minds around the fact that a six-year-old first grader brought a loaded handgun to school and shot a teacher. However, this is exactly what our community is grappling with today. But you see, I am not concerned, Brother Nick, about the boy. I am concerned about the mother. Because the little boy took his mother's gun to school and shot his teacher. He tells me that though the mother never told him to shoot at his teacher, but she created an environment that weaponized him to shoot his teacher. Uh, come here for a moment. She created an environment which told him it's okay that when you don't get your way to shoot somebody if they don't agree with you. She weaponized us to believe that it's okay to take a gun and shoot somebody if you don't like them. It told me something. That it's not so much what you say. It's not so much what you do. It's your environment that impacts you and affects you. I believe. Uh, Brother Ezra, that the environments we come from weaponize us. Oh, yeah, Sister Susan. Some of us have been weaponized to argue. Somebody says something, we don't like it. Mm. Mm. Who you think you is? Who you think you are? <laughs> we ready to argue. Some of us have been weaponized to always back down. We never stand up for ourselves. The some of us have been weaponized to always feel sorry for ourselves. Uh, we don't get promoted, the world is over. We don't get an I love you in the morning, the world is over. Uh, we don't get to travel, the world is over. Some of us have been weaponized to jump from relationship to relationship. Mm. Some of us have been weaponized to be proud. Or you like to say it, sombong. In Proverbs chapter 7, a father weaponizes his son. The son doesn't carry a gun. The son carries a word. The father says to his son, my son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. The father understood what God understands. That the greatest weapon you can carry are words, not a gun. I'll say amen for you. Amen. You see, I discovered that the little boy who shot his teacher 
shot his teacher because the teacher reprimanded him in class. She said, what you're doing is not right. So what did he do? Because of hearing those words, he decided to shoot at her. You believe, you, you, you agree with me that words are powerful. They're the greatest weapon that you can carry because words, listen to me, words can start wars. Words can slash marriages. Words sink churches. Words stink up relationships. Words, oh yeah, soothe guilt. Words strengthen hearts. You see, like movie ratings, you've got to start rating your words. Not all of your words are suitable for all audiences. Some of your words are are rated and they should not be said to children. Some of your words are too harsh. You need to bring down, you need to bring them down to G rating. You want your wife to hear you, you want your husband to hear you, you want your children to hear you. You've got to rate your words properly. Because movie companies understand that you mean your words even if you didn't mean them. You mean your words even if you didn't mean them. So it's important for you to rate your words because once your words escape the lips of your mouth, you can't take it back. There is no, I didn't mean it. There is no, I was just joking. There is no, you're too sensitive. There is no, oh, you can't take a joke. No, no, no. If somebody is hurt, if somebody's feeling a certain kind of way, it means that your words have been used in a wrong way. So the father says, Elder Calvin, he says, strap up. Strap up, put those words in the holster, put them, put them around you, bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablet of your heart. Son, you don't need a PhD, son, you don't need how to, to know how to handle girl, son, you don't need to know how to handle your, ma your money, but son, you need to know one thing is that you got to know how to use words. You've got to know that words are your greatest weapon. Words are the most powerful thing that you have. And I hope somebody's hearing me right now. Because the, the, the difference between a good relationship and a bad one is your words. The difference between being encouraged and being discouraged is your words. The difference between somebody feeling like they can do something with themselves is your words. So the son says, bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. You see, this, the father knows something that we do not know. Because the father says to his son, right here, watch this. He says, say to wisdom, you are my sister. Say to understanding that you are my intimate friend. <laughs> the, the, the father is saying to the son, words are so important that you have got to develop a relationship with them. Mm. 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 You have got to develop a relationship with them. You've got to be able to say two, two words. You are my sister and you are my intimate friend. But the father... Watch this, is very specific. He doesn't just tell him any kind of words, Dr. Regina. The father tells him, uh, you got to say to wisdom and insight. The father is asking his son to develop a relationship with words that are wise and with words that are of understanding or insight. Some of us, we see. You can see me. I'm dressed in a white shirt, a black tie. You know what I mean? I got on sneakers. But you don't see why I decided to dress this way. You don't see that when I looked in my closet, I couldn't find anything else to wear. So I said, I got sneakers, I got brown pants, and I got a shirt. I'm going to make it my outfit for Sabbath. So the words 
The words the father is asking the son to have are not the words that help him to see the physical. Are the words that help him to see the spiritual. The things that are inside. And I want a child of God. Can you see what's inside? Can you see why they think the way they think? Can you see why they hurt? Can you see behind? And what the father is asking the son to do is like what we do when we go to the customer service. You know why we go to the customer service? We go to the customer service because, watch this, because we don't know what to do with our broken iPhone or a broken laptop or a broken car or a broken glasses or a broken whatever. So we need a customer service. Somebody who is an expert to see the problem and then help us to fix it. So the son is, the father is saying to his son, I need you to be strapped up with words that are going to help you to see the problem so that you can fix the problems that you see in your life. Church, are you, are you with me? Because the father understands something. Son, I need you to know that there is somebody out there who is forbidden for you to be with. I need you to know that they out there that if you're with, they're going to mess you up. I need you to be able to see a woman and see what kind of character that she has. I need you to be able to see that uh, this is not good for me. You can only do that if you have insight. If you have words of wisdom. Because now it's getting to where I want to go now. I'm now getting there. I've been building something. Now, now can, I, can I continue? Uh, let, let's go a little bit further. Is that all right? Uh, is that all right? All right, I've set the foundation. Let, let, let's, let's build this house now. We can build the house. Because the father, Sister Donna, realizes that the son is living in the prime of singleness. The father realizes that the son is at a place in which he will start to go on Twitter if he had Twitter in those times. The father realizes that he cannot be with his son as he is Facebooking and talking. The father realizes that he cannot be with his son when he goes off to college. The father realizes that he cannot be with his son when he goes to the mall and watches movies. The father realizes that he is dealing with an Anak Baru Gede. In other words, he's dealing with somebody who he knows, thinks that he knows. Mm. Mm. Somebody who thinks that he has it figured out. Somebody who thinks that he knows what his life is supposed to be. Somebody who thinks that he cannot listen to anybody. Anak Gede Baru. That one. Mm. So the father says, the best thing that I can do for my son, knowing that he's a single boy, is not for me to keep checking his Instagram, to keep checking his Twitter, to keep checking where he goes, to keep, uh, to keep uh, uh, agents spying on him. No, the best thing that I can do is to weaponize him with words. That's the best thing that I can do. Because I can't be with him everywhere he goes. But you know, Anak Baru Gede, is that correct? When parents are talking, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 dad, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't really listen. I never listened when I was young. <laughs> My dad says, go left, I went right. Just because he said go left. My dad would tell me, Henry, don't go play. Please read books. I would go play. <laughs> Let me not go there. I, I, I might take up a lot of time. So the father must do something to help his son understand why it's so important for him to be weaponized with words because the season of his life is so critical. So what the father does is he tells the son a story of two incomplete singles because there's nothing better than a story to help somebody understand your point. So the father says, listen, son, in, in verse number six, he says, one time... At the window of my house, before you were born, 
I looked out through my lattice, threw out my window, and I saw a simple man. In Hebrew, that's not simple, but it's an Anak Baruch Gadei. I saw an Anak Baruch Gadei, and I perceived that he was an Anak Baruch Gadei who did not have sense. So what he did was, he, he, he went outside of his house, he passed along the street corner of a prostitute in the middle of the night. Let's, let's look at this Anak Baruga day as Yolas, a young man lacking sense. You see, like, like water, common sense is available, yet most people drink stupidity instead. This young man that night was drunk with stupidity because he went out in the middle of the night on the street corner to a prostitute's house. He didn't have sense. He, he thought, this woman mm, is like my mother because my mother cooks for me when I'm hungry. My mother uh, makes sure that she buys for me and me when I'm hungry. My mother makes sure that she buys me clothes at HQ and Uniqlo. So, so he thought that he's meeting a good woman. But the Bible says that he met a woman dressed as a prostitute. Let's call her what up. Everybody say what up. That's a woman dressed as a prostitute. That, that's who she, he meets that night. And she was the kind of woman who liked entertainment but did not like commitment. And the reason for that is this. I know man would want to commit to her because she, <laughs> she's loud. Mm. And she is wayward. Her feet do not stay at home. Which man wants a woman who never stays home? <laughs> she is a lady in the streets, and she's not a lady. Mm, I won't say it. And notice when she meets your last that night. So notice what she says to him. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. So she is actually married. But she is a married single. The, the, the young man lacking sense, Yolas, is a single man. He, he doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have children. He doesn't have responsibility. But what up? It's a married woman. But she's a married single. You, you know why? Because her husband is never home. So because her husband is never home, what she does is she goes outside looking for the emotional satisfaction she goes outside looking for affection she goes outside looking for someone to say you look good she goes outside looking for somebody to say you know what i like those hips so she's not a prostitute she's pretending to be one because she's not getting at home what she should be getting i don't blame what i don't blame her because she makes her hair nice, but husband is not there to tell her, baby, mm, 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 I like those curls. She, she has a degree, but she never has an intellectual conversation with her husband because he's not at home. She is raising the kids, but she's never praised or given a gift for raising the kids. I don't blame what up. I don't condone adultery. I don't believe it is right. But adultery is a symptom that something is not complete at home. I hope you just heard that, married people. <laughs> that adultery is a symptom that something is rotten at home. So those who commit adultery, oftentimes they're saying, I need to find something. But the problem is this with what up is what what you're looking for what you're looking for is inside not outside mm. amen amen my sister from africa said amen the rest of you you're gonna catch up in a minute 
she goes outside because her husband is not at home. But she doesn't understand that what she needs is not outside, it's inside. Because something terrible happens in the story. Because when she finally meets Yolas, the young man lacking sense, what up says, the woman dressed as a prostitute says to Yolas, uh, she, 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 she seizes him rather, and she kisses him, and then she says to him, I have to offer sacrifices. In other words, I've been to church. I was at JCC this morning. <laughs> I worship the Lord. <laughs> you are... The one that I've been looking for. Notice what she says. So now I have come out to meet you. Because I prayed about this. God told me that it is not right what my husband is doing to me. So I prayed about it and God told me, let me find somebody else who can satisfy me. So I have come out to meet you. To seek you eagerly. And I have found you. Yolas makes, what up makes a critical mistake because what up has the same mentality that many of us have today and Timothy Keller says it like this, today we stay connected to people only as long as they are meeting our particular needs at an acceptable cost to us. I give to get, we treat people like the stock market. If they start to get too expensive, we start to do relational budget cuts and we let people go. We cut them off because they are costing us too much. I believe that when Wada was getting married that day, she looked at her husband who was not at home, probably busy doing business, probably trying to earn money, probably, I don't know, doing something to provide for the family. But I believe that day when she looked at her husband, she said to have and to hold for better or for worse. She told him that. But somehow things became hard. Things became difficult. So what up says, I need something different. That's how, that's how some of us do it. When we are tired of somebody, we, we jump from the next one to the next one to the next one. Looking for that one who we think will satisfy what we want and what we need. You might say, Pastor, that's single people. <laughs> but you know, married people do that too. I don't know this from experience. I know this from listening to people's experiences. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you don't have to experience to learn. So I have learned that sometimes married people can, can, can start to live single lives. <laughs> they live in the same house, sleep on the same bed, but they don't talk. One goes out early in the morning, one stays at home. When the other one comes home, the other one is not at home. Some married people will say, let me reconnect with old friends. They resurrect dead relationships. <laughs> Some people sleep on the same bed or choose to sleep on another bed. Because the belief is, I need somebody different. I need somebody better. This one, hmm. This one, malas. I need somebody better. That's what she tells Yolas. Yolas, 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 you are the one. You are the one. Yolas, Yolas. And then, and then, and then notice what she does. She, she, she seduces Yolas. She says, the text says, with much seductive speech, what up, persuades him. With all her smooth talk, she compels him, and all at once, Yolas follows her. As an ox goes to the slaughter, or as a stag is caught fast till an arrow pierces its liver, as a bird rushes, rushes into a snare, Yolas does not know that it will cost him his life. What up, and Yolas meet that night? They have a one-night stand, but a one-night stand turned into a trip to the cemetery for Yolas. Because they both believed, the flawed mindset, that a relationship is going to complete me. And somebody's right there today. You got with somebody because they were an extrovert. Mm? But now that you're with them, you realize that they're an introvert just like you. They don't like to talk. They like to be quiet. And you're like, 
But, 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 but I thought you like to talk. Cannot, but why, why are you quiet? Why you never say nothing? We, we go to family gatherings, you, you, you say nothing. But when we're in school, you used to be uh, to joke. And they, I think uh, I made the wrong choice. Let me find somebody else. Some of y'all, uh, you, 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 you were with somebody because they like to travel, take you places. But now things have changed. They don't like to travel. They like to be at home. Ah, wow. What did I do? Believing the lie that a relationship will complete you. And let's look at Yolas and Wada one more time. Yolas was a single man. He could satisfy her physically, but he could never take responsibility as a husband. <laughs> because she had a ring on her finger. <laughs> and Wada could also not satisfy Yolas because Yolas was a, <laughs> she had a ring on her finger. So she could not be with somebody else. Because he was at a different level in life. He, he, hear this, hear this, please, hear this. All of us come into a relationship at a place of lack. Did I say something? I don't hear you. When you enter a relationship, when you meet somebody, you're lacking something. That's why after a while you start to see all the flaws in that person. Ah, he talks too much. Ah, he snores at night. Ah, mm, he wastes his money. Ah, mm, 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 mm. And that's why we are so disappointed. And so I, I want to help you out today. Can I help you out today? Can I help you out today? Yes. Weaponize your singleness. That's what I want to help you understand. Weaponize your singleness if you want to avoid the story of what up, if you want to avoid the story of your loss. Pastor, tell me what is to weaponize your singleness. Here it is. You have got to date wisdom before you date a person. All the young people, all the singles in the space should say amen. Amen, single people. You have got to date wisdom before you date a person because the father tells the son, son, you have got to say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call inside your intimate friend. He's saying to his son, son, before you meet a woman, before you can handle her moods, <laughs> before you can handle her, please handle wisdom first. If he was talking to his daughter, he'll say, daughter, baby, before you can handle Jim and John, Harun, please handle wisdom first. Like, like go out on a date with wisdom. Like, like for a year, just, just date wisdom. <laughs> just, just say, you know, me and wisdom. Uh, if somebody asks you, uh, are you dating? No, yes, I'm dating. Who are you dating? Wisdom. <laughs> See, that's what some of you single people need to be doing. <laughs> when somebody approaches you, are you single? You'll be like, no, I'm taking. I'm dating wisdom. Wisdom? Yes, wisdom. <laughs> And I cannot wisely get with you until I have developed a good relationship with wisdom. Mm -mm -mm. You see, because the father understood something, he says to his son, if you are wise, you are going to know who to date. You are going to understand that there are some people that come into your life that they are not going to be a good influence in your life. There are some people who come into your life because this woman, the text says, is an adulterer. Meaning that she does not respect the seventh commandment. And the Bible says if you don't respect one, you don't respect them all. She doesn't respect the Sabbath. She doesn't respect honoring your parents. So, he, so, so, so the son is saying, the father is saying to the son, son, she's not the one for you. I need you to have wisdom so that you, cannot, you can judge character. Notice what the father is saying. The father is not saying that she's forbidden because she didn't go to UE, because she's not using an iPhone 14, because she doesn't drive a BM, because she, 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 she doesn't wear Nike. No, he's not talking about things. He's saying you got to be able to see character. And wisdom will allow you to do that. 
Because wisdom in the Bible is not just wisdom. Many of us have knowledge. I know many of you are educated. You have gone to good schools. You know many things. You know things that I, I don't know. Last Sabbath after, after church, I was talking to my brother Nick, and he was telling me about finances. He said to me something. He said, Pastor, do you know that it's not good to put your money in the bank because the bank is just making you lose money? I said, oh, I, I didn't know that. And I said, you know, I got to sit down with you for lunch so that I can learn a little bit more. I have not come good on that, on that declaration yet for us to have lunch and to learn about money. But this is not what wisdom is all about in the scriptures. In the scriptures, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, of wisdom. So biblical wisdom, when you are dating wisdom, you are saying, God, you are number one in my life. God, you are the best person in my life. God, you are the last person that I consult before I make a decision. You are first, you are best, and you are last in my life. So when you are dating wisdom, you are saying, God, I will date you first. I will be committed to you first. My life will be directed and aligned to yours. You are rushing to go on a date and travel to Bali? <laughs> Nah, I'm saying rush to read the scriptures, rush to pray, <laughs> rush, rush to give, rush to serve in church. That's dating wisdom. Rush to say, Lord, I'm sorry I did that sin again. Lord, I'm sorry I'm a proud person. Lord, I'm sorry that I feel always bad about myself. That's what wisdom is going to do for you. Because here it is, happy is the woman. Happy is the one that fears God. You're going to be happy when you're dating wisdom. You're going to be happy when you're dating wisdom. You are going to be happy when you're dating wisdom. Why? Because you're dating the Lord. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I, I, I want to date him. You know, my childhood friend, he's a nice man. I want to date that girl. She cooks well. God is saying, don't worry about her or him. Worry about wisdom. If you want to weaponize your, 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 your singleness, here's the second thing that you got to do. Don't fix a problem with a problem. Because you see, what up faces a problem. She is in a loveless marriage. Her husband is not at home. So what does she do to fix a problem? She goes and creates another problem. <laughs> She, she says, come, let us take our fill of love. Let us delight ourselves with love. Love, love. For my husband is not at home. Mm. He has gone on a long journey. He took a bag of money with him at full moon and he will, at full moon he will come home. He's not here right now. So... Let's go in, Yolas. But here's the thing. You cannot solve marital problems with extramarital solutions. I just said something. You just said amen. She's solving a marital problem with an extramarital solution. Did you hear what I said? She's looking outside when she should be looking inside. And this is for somebody who is married because we have too many married singles today. You look at the spouse. You look at the wife. You look at the husband. You're like, man, I'm not happy here. The, the solution is not to go outside, extra married or no, no, no. The solution is to look inside. Pastor, what's the solution? The biblical view of marriage says like this. When you love somebody, you are giving. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and did what? Gave himself for it. That's the biblical view of, of, of marriage. You are in it because you're willing to give. You're willing to sacrifice. You're willing to give of yourself. So what up should not have said, I'm going to go outside and fix the problem. What up should have said, I will sacrifice myself. What is it that I'm not giving? What is lacking in this marriage that I can help out? And if she did that, she will not find your loss or meet your loss. You only solve problems in marriage with the solutions of marriage. If something is lacking, what are you not giving? 
And if you are single, and this is for me too, because I'm single. I've been reading the book called The Meaning of Marriage. And you know what? After reading the book, I said, uh, I'm not ready for marriage. I ain't ready. Because marriage is saying, Henry, are you willing to die? And I said to myself, mm, 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 I'm not willing to die. Mm, mm. <laughs> because sometimes I've made a plan. But then I have to change the plan for someone because they need me. And it's not always comfortable, Brother Ernest. Because <laughs> I've made my plans. I'm a pastor. I'm supposed to call people to pray with. Why, why do you need me right now? <laughs> I'm working on a sermon. <laughs> so if you're going to get married, or you are married, sacrifice. You got to be willing to give. And many of the problems we are facing in our relationships is because you won't give. You won't give humility. You won't give your way. No, today we are going to the park. I said we are going to the park. Perhaps the person is tired. It's okay to give up the plan. So the solutions you are seeking for are not outside. They are in you. And are you willing to sacrifice Let's go a little bit further. I now want to land this plane real quick. But the last thing that I want to tell you is that if you want to weaponize your singleness is that you should not rely on yourself. You should rely on the word of the Father. You should not rely on yourself. You have got to rely on the word of the Father. You know, bloopers show you mistakes of actors when they're acting. In this text, we have bloopers. The bloopers of what up and Yolas. What are their bloopers? Yolas goes out relying on his own understanding. He goes out at night, in the middle of the night, saying, yeah, I got this going on. What up goes out relying on her ability to seduce men. And the question is, what are you relying on today? Who are you relying on today? What skill makes you feel like, hmm, I'm good? Or oh, relying on something. I know you're relying on something right now. You're relying on a chair. You are not even thinking that the chair can break and drop you. You think the chair is, is, is solid. I'm relying on this mic right now. I'm relying on these slides right now. We're all relying on something. And unfortunately, sometimes what we rely on costs us. So last Friday... True story. I, uh, I went to the store. I bought groceries. They cost me about 600,000 rupiah. I bought grapes. I like grapes. I, brought, I bought apples. I bought all kinds of groceries. And I, I took them home. And I put them in my refrigerator. When I wake up in the morning, last Sabbath morning, that's why I also came late. I've been coming late to church a lot lately. I don't know why. But I came late to church because my fridge was no longer cooling my food. I was relying on my fridge to cool my food. So there's water all over my floor. So I started to, to, to clean and to mop. It took me an hour. And I came to church almost a little bit after 10. Now, I don't know how to fix a fridge, so I relied on technicians to come. And when the technicians came, I could not understand them. <laughs> they, they, they spit, they, they spat so much bahasa. They said, I was like, oh, what are you talking about? So I, I called friends to help me to interpret what they were saying. And after they fixed the refrigerator, they asked me to pay them 700000 what am I trying to tell you? Outside of God, whatever you rely on always comes at a cost. <laughs> you don't believe me? Can I prove it to you? You don't believe me? Outside of God, anything, anything, anyone comes at a cost. Your job costs you your time. Your kids <laughs> cost you your money. And some of you are crying, man, I got to pay so much. When they were born, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> 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 
You, you know, sometimes we complain to God about things in our lives. But what you're complaining about is a sign that God answered your prayer. <laughs> you wanted children, didn't you? He gave them to you. They cry. They poop. They <laughs> God is saying, you wanted it. I gave it to you. <laughs> you wanted a relationship, right? Yes, I did. Why are we always arguing? You wanted a relationship? So outside of God, anything we rely, rely on costs us so much. And I need you to understand that, that I need you to understand that if you rely on God, it will never cost you. God will always pour into you. He always give what you are lacking because the Father will always claim you even if you collapse. And somebody today has collapsed. You've made choices that you're not happy with. You have, you, 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 you have decided that you're going to end a relationship. And you feel like your world is over. It has collapsed. But I want you to understand that the Father still claims you. You might be telling yourself, I can never be loved. But I want you to understand that the Father still claims you. It, it doesn't matter whether you're married or single. You are a child of God. You can rely on him. It doesn't matter who you, you, who you have slept with or who you're about to sleep with. It doesn't matter what you smoked. It doesn't matter what you've drunk. It doesn't matter what you stole. It doesn't matter what you're about to steal. It doesn't matter. God still claims you. And that's why you can rely on the Father. And that's why in this passage... The son is you. The father is God. And he's saying to you, son. He's saying to you, daughter. My son, my daughter. Keep my words. Treasure up my commands. Live. Keep my teachings as the apple of your eye. You see, the father is saying to the son. Son, I need you to keep... To keep my word as an apple of your eye, the, the English version doesn't do a good job because in the original language, the apple of your eye is the little man in the eye. You see, what the father is telling the son is this, son, if you keep my word, your eyes are going to be so opened, they're going to be so enlightened that you're going to be able to know when you've gone wrong. If you rely on my word, your life will be good. If you rely on my word, you're going to make it. I'm ending it on this. During the pandemic, we were relying on temperature checks. Because temperature checks or checkers, you can stop playing band. Temperature checks or checkers would help businesses know if somebody is sick or not. And then either they go get treatment or they go back home and quarantine. It helped them to see what was wrong. That's what the word of the Father is going to do to you if you rely on him. A weapon does not decide whether or not to kill. A weapon is a manifestation of a decision that has already been made. And today I need you to make three decisions. That is, you're going to date wisdom before you date a person. You will not fix a problem with a problem. You will not rely on yourself, but you rely on the Father. A weapon is not a weapon. The weapon is in the decision. There is somebody here who needs to say, you know what, Pastor? I've not dated wisdom ever. But today I want to date wisdom. I want to focus on wisdom. Anybody? If you raise your hand, please stand. There is somebody here 
who's been fixing a problem with a problem. Your marriage is messed up. Your relationship is messed up. Work is messed up. But you've been looking outside for the solution. But today you want to say, I want to look inside for the solution. Anybody like that? I want to look inside for the solution. Let, let me see your hand. Raising up so fast. No, let me see your hand. And there is somebody here who needs to rely on the word of the Father. You don't know what the Father knows. You are an Anak Barugade. God knows everything. And today you want to say, God, I will stop being an Anak Barugade. I want to rely on your word. Anybody like that? Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed as we pray. Mighty God, today we have made decisions to weaponize our singleness. We will no longer date people without dating wisdom. We will no longer fix problems with problems. We will no longer rely on ourselves. We're going to rely on your word, oh Father. And I'm praying for my brother and my sisters who have made the decision to weaponize themselves. That, Father, you would help them to be strong so that whatever they face, they're able to fight it. Whatever they face, they're able to conquer it. And so, Father, I pray that you would be with us and guide us. And, Father, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being kind. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you.